Today, the rarest Yu-Gi-Oh card of all time is up for sale. What's up guys, we're back with another video talking about the one, the only Tyler the Great Warrior card that has gone up for sale today. And we did a video reacting when Simo's video came out, kind of watching his video, seeing what was up with that card, all the different news that was coming out about it. But there's a lot of things that we didn't touch on and there's a few new things that have come out that I kind of wanted to talk about in this video. And once we get to the end, I want to make a prediction on just how much this card is going to go for because we're going to be doing a live stream when this auction ends on April 29th and uh, we're going to be seeing exactly what it goes for it live. The first thing I wanted to bring up was the last time I did this reaction video, tons of the comments were talking about the card being graded. Now you guys know I really like grading. I do a lot of grading at PSA. I do some at BGS, not so much, and a little bit at CGC, but I know a lot of people don't like grading. So I'm just going to address why I think they graded it and the reasons for it. So first of all, I think they graded the card because they want to get it authenticated. When you get something graded, it's technically being authenticated by BGS as well. So they're getting it graded so they can see, oh, it is the one, the only, the Tyler the Great Warrior, the one of one. So when it's sold to the buyer, they actually know for sure that they're getting the card they're buying. They're not like, is this like a fake? You know, maybe it's another one they made or something like that. But it's the actual one from Tyler himself. Now, what they could have done is they could have gone to PSA and simply authenticated it because then they wouldn't have gotten the seven. It would have just said authenticated by PSA and that would have been it. But uh, instead they went with BGS, they went with the grading route. I don't know if BGS offers a simple authentication process or if it's uh, it has to be graded, but they went with the grading route either way, ended up getting the seven. And a lot of people were like, ooh, a seven, you know? And I said personally, well, it's still a one of one and it's not gonna really affect the price that much. But if you really think about it, it could potentially affect the price. It just depends on who's buying. There's not a lot of people that have the money to buy this that also care about the story and all that different stuff. So does the BGS seven matter to any of them? Let's say there's a hundred different buyers that have have the capital, they have the uh, liquid cash flow to be able to afford a card like this. Does the BGS seven affect any of them? So let's imagine maybe five of those people are like, oh, seven, that just really turns me off. I don't wanna spend as much as I might have. Maybe I won't even bid on it at all. That's 5% of the buyer's pool, which is actually pretty big. So when you think about it that way, it is possible that grading the seven actually did hurt or maybe grading the seven and getting authenticated actually helped versus just keeping it in the sealed, uh, whatever you call that, a case, I guess. I don't know what that thing was before. Now, I wanna get into a few reasons why I think the card could do really well and why it might go for an extremely high price. So first of all, the auction is on eBay rather than at an auction site. So buying on eBay is a much different process than buying on Heritage, Golden, or PWCC. Those are all a bunch of different auction houses. eBay does not have a buyer's premium. So when you buy something on eBay, you're not paying like an extra 20% on top like a buyer's premium would. You are still gonna have to pay like taxes in a lot of cases, so that's gonna be pretty expensive. But compared to like a 20% buyer's premium, the tax is not gonna to get to that. So you're gonna save a lot of money as a buyer. Like, so if you bid like 100,000, you don't have to pay an extra 20,000 to buy on the card like you would at an auction house. So another thing about eBay is there's no extended bidding. What extended bidding is, is someone bids on something in the last like 30 minutes. I think it's a different number depending on what auction house it is or where it is. But if let's say there's 30 minutes left in an auction, you're at $500,000 and you bid 520,000. The timer then restarts to 30 minutes again. So if you were at 30 seconds left in the auction, it then goes back to 30 minutes so other people have a chance to like counteract your bid. eBay does not have this. eBay has a simple cutoff time. You got to have your bids in. You have a max bid. So once it gets to that zero, it, it'll take the two max bids. It'll bid you guys against each other until the max bid is hit. Uh, is hit for one and then the other person eclipses it. That chooses the winner for all the different people who are bidding at the same time. There's no sort of wait and see what somebody bids, then it kind of restarts and you have to bid again and do stuff like that. So it's a different auction style. We'll see, does that help or does that hurt? I think it could potentially hurt, but it could also help make people put like their absolute max amount they would pay so that that way, in an auction house, they might get it for less than that because like nobody, so maybe somebody doesn't bid them up. So they just win like lower than they thought they were going to have to. eBay is also a much better place in terms of eyeballs. There's going to be a lot more people that know how to use eBay, that know about eBay, that buy on eBay than maybe like an auction house. Because an auction house is a little bit more niche. You got to be really into the collectible side of things. You got to be like looking on those auction house websites and everything like that. Versus eBay, I think they're going to be promoting the card. So you might even see it on the front page of eBay. You're just some random person. You hop in, you see that on 
the front page. But how many big buyers will that lure in off the front page of eBay? Probably not many, but you never know. All you really need is one or two big buyers in an auction on eBay to really go back and forth and make it go crazy in terms of price. So we'll have to see if that matters at all, but the eyeballs on the card is definitely gonna help. Also, we've said this many times in the last video, this is one of the most iconic stories in Yu-Gi-Oh. This story has been floating around since 2005 when the card was printed for Tyler, and people have not known a lot of details, but they still managed to talk about it, make up details about it, say different offers they've heard, which are probably not true, and uh, other things that may or may not be true about the story, but it's still been talked about for almost 20 years. And when we're talking about this level of wealth, People with this much money, they don't really need a lot of stuff anymore. They've kind of bought everything they need. I'm just speculating because I'm not one of these people, obviously. But if you have this much stuff, you've got your giant house, you've got your boat, you've got all that different stuff. But what you start to look for is something different, something iconic, something unique. And this certainly fits that bill. Now, let's get to some reasons why it may not do so well, relatively speaking, because I think this card's gonna go for a lot of money no matter what, but relatively speaking to what the speculation could be, let's see some reasons why it might not go so well. So the Kazuki Takahashi artwork, which is originally seen in Simo's video, is not included in this auction. Originally, we thought it might be a bundle between the card and the different artworks and all be in one, which would have been insane. I think that really would have bolstered the price like a lot. But being only the card, it is definitely, it's not gonna necessarily hurt the card, but when you think about it, it's three items to one. So obviously there's only one of the three items. The price is not gonna go for as much without the other two items. Then we have to talk about Tyler's story. We already mentioned earlier that it's one of the most iconic stories. I put that as a positive, but there's also a negative spin to it. The negative is that this card is so personal for Tyler that some people might not be interested in it. This card literally has his name printed on it. It has the story of how he fought and won the battle versus cancer, which is super, super cool, but can that really mean as much to anyone except to him? And I know that some buyers feel a little bit weird buying this card when it means so much to a specific individual and his journey. And then the BGS 7, which we have already mentioned, it's graded by BGS. Some people don't like BGS. It's graded at all. Some people don't like grading. It's a seven. Obviously that's not an eight, nine, or 10. So it's worse than all of those would have been. So those are all factors to consider in terms of the negative but we'll just have to see how everyone responds. So before what we get into what I think it's gonna go for, I wanted to see and compare it to some other previous sold cards. So I wanted to revisit my top 10 most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards video. I made this in 2022 in June. So not quite a year ago, but almost a year ago. We talked about, these are my top two. This was the Duel Links prize card that Jesse Cotton showed on Team Samurai X1's video. So he called this card a six figure sale. He didn't actually say the number, but he said it was well over the 85,000, which they knew at the time to be the most expensive blue eyes white dragon so it was well over that which whatever that means over eighty five thousand. i mean does that mean ten thousand more does that mean a hundred thousand more you really don't know we don't know the exact price here so we're just gonna have to assume this was a very expensive card so we know that this Yu-Gi-Oh card probably went for 100k i would guess something like that so we know okay Yu-Gi-Oh cards can go for 100k this was like a very very limited one because it was a prize card it did come out in 2019 though so compared to like tyler which came out in 2005 there's also you know the whole story behind it which is good or bad as we mentioned earlier the second card I mentioned, which this is a, a very blurry screenshot here from my video, but a Blue Eyes White Dragon First Edition Legend of Blue Eyes BGS 10, which you guys know, 9.5 and 310s, which let's not get into the BGS thing where there's three 9.5s for like two days, but now then they switch it back. But you guys know all about that drama. Maybe we'll talk about it at some point. But this card was an actual BGS 10 and it was sold slash traded for. It was both cash and uh, a trade involved for 159,000. It was a confirmed price because I know the guy who did it. He's legit he would not have like made that up and I also know that he has some crazy stuff so I think he actually did have the card originally and then traded for some other stuff so 159,000 for a Yu-Gi-Oh card like wow that's pretty good I mean but will Tyler like be able to eclipse that because this was a core set card while it is the blue eyes but there was thousands of these made it was just potentially graded higher than any other we'll have to see how that matters let's go to the next thing which is Magic the Gathering post Malone on the Howard Stern show this was I think in 2022 he mentioned that he spent $800,000 on a signed Black Lotus this artist proof. So even if you know nothing about magic, just assume the Alpha Lotus, just can compare that to the LOB Blue Eyes, except for it's actually more exclusive because they know there's only 1100 copies of it to begin with. And it's from 93. So it's like eight years, nine years older. So that's all that added on makes it a little bit harder to find a little bit more iconic and probably more expensive. So we've got 800,000 locked in for Magic the Gathering. Post Malone recently bought some Yu-Gi-Oh cards. So maybe we'll keep that in mind for the auction coming up. Then we can talk about Pokemon. Logan Paul, I mean, say what you think about this guy, but 
but I mean, he spent 5.3 million on a Pokemon card. This is the Pokemon Illustrator. I think there's like 20 something of these available. This was the only PSA 10, I believe. And he spent 5.3 million, which Yu-Gi-Oh! Pokemon. I mean, I know we don't like Pokemon around here, guys, but Pokemon is probably 10 times more popular than Yu-Gi-Oh! If I just had to guess, probably just triggered people saying that. Let me know in your in the comments what how you feel about that. Am I wrong? Am I right? But I think overall, the franchise of Pokemon has probably a lot more fans because of all the games and everything like that. So this price, probably not a realistic Yu-Gi-Oh! price, but it is something to consider in terms of trading card sales. And then finally, let's get to a Yu-Gi-Oh! sale. Back in 2021, if you've been a follower of me for a long time, you know that I was actually there to see this uh, opened up. I actually was the one, me and Lewis, Vintage Yu-Gi-Oh! opened up this case just to confirm the authenticity. We checked through it. It looked pretty good and it ended up selling for 570,000. That's including buyer's premium. That's the 20% on top. So it was about like 480 something, I think, before that. Uh, uh, for the final buyer's price and then they had the extra 20 percent which we mentioned is not involved here on the ebay also these two items are very similar and very different so tyler is obviously a single card versus a case of cards which has 288 packs times that by nine cards you have that many cards versus one card that's a lot different but at the same time a case of lob first edition it's not a one of one but it's probably very very rare and we have not seen one of these since the auction two years ago so it's pretty close to a one of one it's very very rare item so taking this into consideration who are the buyers for this going to be so i wanted to talk about some of the well-known Yu-Gi-Oh people that maybe might be interested or at least people think might be interested so ruxin 34 i know a lot of you guys have asked me hey uh ruxin you going to be bidding on the title of the great warrior card and i've told many of you guys on my twitch stream no absolutely not and i say absolutely not not because i think it's a weird card or i'm deterred by any of the things that i said for the negative reasons i don't have this kind of money guys i open a lot of product but i don't know if you guys know it's pretty expensive. And uh, I've never had $100,000. And uh, I think it's going to go for more than that. So yeah, I've, I've never had that kind of money. I probably never will. But I mean, who who's to hoping? But it's probably not going to happen. So next person, let's just throw another well-known name, Rhyme Style. I don't think Rhyme Style is interested. I believe he said he, this isn't a card for him. He's not really looking to get this kind of thing. So, so I don't think Rhyme Style is going to be interested in this. Then we have one that I'm sure everybody thought as soon as we saw this go for sale, Moist Critical. Now I mentioned this to Moist Critical critical. I know he had already heard about it, but I asked him, Hey, are you interested in bidding on this? And he actually said, no, I'm not bidding on this. I'm surprised he's selling the card. I didn't go too far in depth about any other reasons, but he said, no, it's not for him. And he's surprised how they're selling it. And he is probably the biggest well-known buyer when it comes to being outspoken about being a Yu-Gi-Oh fan and being really popular because he is a massive creator. We know he's got the money for this kind of stuff, but him not being interested, who does that leave? Strictly Sealed, a popular collector, actually made a comment in his video that he would bid up to $50,000. So assuming Strictly Sealed's offer was legit in his video, we have at least $50,000 for this card, which is still a ton for a Yu-Gi-Oh card. But then we get into the no-name buyers, and that's not an insult to buyers who are uh, very wealthy but don't have a name in the Yu-Gi-Oh community. That's just people that are not interested in being known by people, or at least people knowing that they have a lot of money. There are tons of these people out there. There are people who buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards, but they're not interested in being involved in the, the YouTube community, Instagram, any of that stuff. They're just interested in collecting, or maybe they're interested in silently being a part and not actually saying anything. So I know for a fact there are some of these people out there because the LOB case opening buyer is still unknown. I have no idea who bought that. And they spent $570,000. And guess what? There wasn't just one person bidding. There was multiple people involved in that bid trying to get that case. So that tells me there's other people out there who have that kind of money who like Yu-Gi-Oh as well. Then we go to the Asian market. The Asian market has tons of history and lore attached to it when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh collecting. And they might see a TCG card like this with the crazy story behind it and say, you know what? I need that card for my collection. And there's no real way to know about these Asian collectors because one, they speak a different language most of the time. And so even if they are involved in the community, it's unlikely they're involved in the English community because there's the whole language barrier and everything like that. And Asian collectors have been known to buy a lot of TCG cards. This is like the 10,000 and dragon i remember i sold my psa 10 on ebay to japan and i think they spent about four thousand dollars on the psa 10 at the time so that was a big money buy and i heard from other people selling Ten Thousand dragons that they were selling a lot to japan and other asian markets so with all these prices and potential buyers in mind how much is this going to go for so we already know of strictly's outstanding potential bid of up to fifty thousand dollars we of course don't know if this is the case until it actually happens but he has at least put it out there publicly so i figure he's going to back it up there's also been many many rumors which there's no weight behind these and they may or may not be true that tyler has had a lot Lot of high dollar offers. I've heard of up to 150,000 in certain videos, but I don't think that that is actually confirmed. 
And then of course we have all those sales we talked about going up for 800,000 for a magic card, 5.3 million for a Pokemon card. Will Yu-Gi-Oh reach those? We'll see. So taking all this into consideration, I'm going to make a prediction about what I think this card will sell for. And we're going to be doing a live stream when it happens. I mentioned this earlier so we can see if I'm right. So for my official prediction, I'm going to guess that this card goes for $325,000. I think there's a chance that it could go for a lot lower because it's not including the artist proofs or whatever you want to call those drawings and stuff like that. I think if those were included, I think 325 would be a grand slam. It'd be automatic if they were included i think it would be an automatic 300 plus k but not including that we'll have to see what the card goes for i don't know if some people will hold out because they know there's the artist potentially coming up you could get the drawings i don't know if that's actually confirmed or not but they might be speculating about that i was considering a half a million dollar total bid but thinking about the lob case and that being in the absolute height and peak of people hyped about trading cards 2021 i just don't see it reaching that same level of hype even though it's probably a more exclusive item. So make sure to let me know in the comments anything you disagree with or agree with in this video. I wanna hear your perspective about Tyler the Great Warrior because I mean, we're gonna see what happens guys. It's only 10 days away and you guys can join that live stream with me when it happens live and we can see who's right. So make your predictions down in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Shout out to Tone Fo Show, Daxter, JT Cho, Puffets of Doom, Ernesto DeAnda, Dizzy, Hoppus, Choice 333, Mycycle, James Jance, TCG Trusted Cards, America Deutzer, Supreme Sage 21, and then the Show, Ian Musa, Junior Barding, Mimic Gecko, and Thomas McLean. Thank you guys for supporting the channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.